Let's um, jump into this before we go into the press play really quickly. Uh, this is a story that I read, and I'm glad you added this to the card. Um, nice, nice little title here: fact versus fiction. So, Martin or, or Scorsese, opinion, opinion versus fact. What the fuck did I just say? Fact versus. It's been a long day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fact opinion versus, versus fiction. Fact. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, just to tee it up really quickly, Martin Scorsese. Um, you know, one of the, if not. Uh, just say one of the one of the most well known no, arguably speaking one of the, you think one, he's of the, the one of the greatest director yeah. if not the greatest director of all time so um scorsese uh, i don't really have to give too much background on the guy you should know him by now if you're listening to this podcast um i wouldn't say that i, I think that there are a lot of film fans out there who might not be because he hasn't of recent decades he hasn't i mean I mean, I guess you could say Wolf, Wolf of Wall, Wall Street. Street. I, I guess you could say that, but not like it was back in the '90s and '80s. He was okay, there was nothing fair. he could do no wrong. That's fair back then, you know. But so he is a uh, a decorated filmmaker, Martin Scorsese. Yeah. Um, similar to uh, what what uh, what was that fucking guy uh, Spielberg? Spielberg said yeah. uh, a few months back where uh, he kind of tried to knock streaming services like Netflix, Netflix and the films that, uh, you know, go straight to these streaming services as not qualifying in the same category as true theater films. Uh, so Martin Scorsese really came out and recently came out and said, uh, a lot of these superhero movies, like, you know, the ones that we see produced in MCU are not film. Well, let me give the exact quote because this is going to speak directly to what I want to say about this. Here's exactly what he and and, and listen to the words because they're very, it's going to be very precise my critique of this whole situation. I don't see them. I tried, you know, um, but that's not cinema. Honestly, the closest I can think of them, as well made as they are, with actors doing the best they can under the circumstances, is uh, theme parks. Uh, it isn't uh, the cinema of human beings trying to convey emotional, psychological experiences to another human being. That's the exact quote. Uh, from at least as far as this this article is concerned, maybe they have a quote wrong, but that's to my knowledge, that's exactly what he said. Um, do you want to give your two cents and then I'll I'll jump in? I somewhat understand where he's coming from, mm -hmm. right? Uh, a movie like Infinity War, right? It's somewhat easier to make a film like that than uh, let's say what what is, is it? Is it easier to make this so, for so, so film like Endgame? The characters are already there, right? And it's easy to make... Or I'm not going to say it's easy. There is seemingly uh, an easier path to making fictional, superhero, uh, you know, above man characters likable and lovable, right? You can essentially remove all of the human traits that you won't like. You know, you take a Captain America, right? You just make him perfect. That's all you got to do. You make him perfect and likable and handsome. That's it. But there's a difficulty in still making Captain America seem very much like a real person and convey that emotion that he's talking about. So I think what he's missing... So I, again, I, I agree with him that there might be an easier path to taking these fictional fake characters and you can create everything you know where you have the opportunity to create everything than it is to make a film with real people right who have real complexities who have to display real emotion you have to create real story around them that's rooted in reality and create something from that but he's still bullshit right <laughs> it's, it's, it's still complete fucking bullshit because a movie like endgame it checks every box that you would. If you put a list of 10 things that a film, a true film needs to have, I think a movie like Endgame is going to check every box. I think Spielberg, Scorsese, they're just res somewhat resistant to what's happening in film right now where these these movies like, you know, the like the Joker that we're going to talk about in a moment, like Endgame, they're getting so good. Like the writing is getting so good. The story development is so good. The character is getting so great that they're competing on the same plane as a film that Scorsese would, would create, right? What he would deem as traditional film because the writing is strong. This Again, the character development is strong and he's resistant to that. Like It's like you, you love what you've done. You, like you love the past and it's easy to be nostalgic about that. He loves the past. He loves what old traditional filmmaking used to be, somewhat resistant to where it's going. Yeah. Um, I think that all that is completely true. Um, 
I think what I would add to that is there's a reason why I put opinion versus fact, right? Because this is this is sort of what I hate in debate uh, in, in in just our society right now, right? Where, and this is why I said pay close attention to the exact words that he said. The exact words that I'm talking about uh, are when he, uh, when he says, uh, he says, an opinion that's dressed up as a fact, right? He says the exact words, but that's not cinema. He doesn't uh, preface it with, I don't believe that cinema. He never says, this is just my opinion. He yeah. just says blanketly, that's not cinema. As if he were the arbitrator for what is cinema and what is not cinema. Yeah. And then further to that point, okay, comic book movies aren't cinema. Fine. What else isn't cinema to you? If you have a movie that's objectively not an introspective deep dive into uh, character studies, are those is that not cinema to you? Yeah. Did somebody not go out and use a camera and use sound and use you know all these sort of storytelling techniques uh, that might not be to your level of what you appreciate about films? And then and then okay, well, what if you have a movie that's in between? You know, yeah. but then forget all that, right? If you have a movie like you can take a movie, maybe like uh, maybe you take one of Tim Burton's Batman movies, right? OK, M- maybe fucking Batman Forever. And I don't even know if Tim Burton did that, <laughs> one, but uh, Batman Forever, Batman and Robin. Right. And you're like, uh, this isn't really cinema. OK, you're going to try to tell me the Dark Knight. That's not cinema. Yeah, it's hard to take that. Are you crazy? It's hard to take that down from the cinema category. There's so many themes, so many layers to it, so so much conveyed in the film, so many so many issues that they're dealing with. How can you not say that that's yeah. cinema? What box doesn't it check? And then even more ironically, Joker. You're going to try to tell me that's not a cinematic film? And ironically, I say ironically because the film borrows from his films. The the Joker is in no short and, and the film Todd Phillips will admit. Yeah. I borrowed from directly from taxi driver and the King of comedy, which yeah. are two classic, uh, Martin Scorsese films. Yeah. I mean this uh, very much. So, uh, taxi driver. Exactly. Um, so it's rich that he would say, and, and, and here, and I can't even claim that this is my own thing that, uh, I, I was watching John Campia, um and uh and one of the, his critiques of it was that uh how are you going to criticize something if you actually haven't seen it i think at uh, some point here he actually says i he uh, says i tried or yeah i tried or like something to allude to the fact that he hasn't he doesn't actually watch them yeah which I, I think that's bullshit too if you haven't even seen it yet yeah there's no way you don't watch the highest grossing movie of all time in in a movie like Endgame, but I, I can or see, have not can, seen any of the twenty three MCU films it, that have been produced. If he's talking about his own opinion, I can see how he can say that Endgame isn't like cinema to him. I can see that because Endgame isn't really a deep character, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, analysis, and it, 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 you know the themes that they deal with aren't necessarily deep sort of themes. Uh, not necessarily. I mean, sure, there's there's ways you can kind of contort and contort that, but that that I can even see because it's like this big summer blockbuster, big explosions, and that's pretty yeah, much. Yeah, you can't tell me Tony Stark's character doesn't uh, over the have arc a deep of the character analysis. Yeah, over the arc of of, the, of all the films, I, I can see that, but I can I can see what he's sort of saying. But again, this is the problem in 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 discourse today of saying something that's not an actual fact that is it's simply dressed, your it's dressed opinion up as a fact is yeah. dressed up as a fact but it's just your opinion and look i don't give a fuck if you're martin scorsese and like a lot of people are, are and when i hear them talk about this they're like oh my god i must kneel to the altar look Bullshit. look i consider for one consider t- although taxi driver is kind of hard for me to sit through um but i remember watching raging bull and i remember that was one of the first times and I've watched movies all my life. That was one of the first. And I watched it as an adult. One of the first times that I just bawled out crying, not because I think the, they tried to make me cry, but because I just, I felt a deep connection to the film. Right. Yeah. And so I'm saying this with kind of, you know, and I know it's sort of bullshit when people say with all due respect, I'm trying to say with all due respect, um, good, good fellas. I believe that is the best movie of all time, but with all due respect, 
I don't give a fuck if it's Martin Scorsese, if it's Spielberg, kick fucking rocks. If you're if you're going to try to sit there and play arbiter to what is considered film uh, cinema and what's not, that that just means that you believe in gatekeepers. You believe in that your opinion is the supreme opinion because yeah. that's all it really is is an opinion. Don't try to give me this. Um, if you're if you're going to say uh, statements like oh this isn't cinema that you have to preface it with I believe yeah and if you don't you're I don't give a fuck if you've made the greatest film on earth I don't give a fuck what you're saying right now yeah no matter how great you are the tides will change eventually right um, the wind will blow in a different direction so whether you're Spielberg whether you're Scorsese Tim Burton there will come a time when what you're doing is is no longer I'm not going to say no longer needed, but when it's when it's time for new people to kind of take the reins, right? Well, and, when there, when there should be a, a fresher approach to it. Yeah, when when things t- things change over time, right? Film changes. Film is going to evolve. It's going to adapt. There's going to be new technology. So the the style of filmmaking in in the 70s and the 80s, it is not the same style of filmmaking now. I mean, granted, there should there are a lot of things that will always remain in film and always should because it's tasteful right but to say that these like uh comic movies the joker uh the dark knight uh end game are not film it's kind of bullshit that's just you being resistant to to change and not wanting to welcome or, or just what, what's happening today versus like what you're used to. Absolutely. Because the, the, the rules you're, that you said, you don't want to see them change. Of course not. Right. And, 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 and what this is, is, is you're, you're used to a day and age where you, and you were right. What you said earlier, like back in the day, car, comic book movies were like kind of cartoonish, you know, yeah. and in so many ways because of like the Tim Burton's of the world where, although you could argue his first, the first Batman movie wasn't necessarily cartoonish, but when you start getting to Batman returns and all that other shit, yeah, it's, it, it starts to get yeah. a little campy, right? But what they're doing in these days, especially with the film that we're about to talk about, it's incredible, you know, in terms of really being like, fuck it. It just won the fucking Venice Film Festival. You know, it got the highest uh, yeah. award there. There's a reason for that. And it didn't just get it because, oh, my God, this is a, they, they distinctly go out of their way not to give awards to comic book movies. Right. But they were forced to because they were like, fuck, this shit is good. This movie. Fire. Joaquin Phoenix's performance, uh, the way this film was produced and directed, yeah. uh, could not be ignored. So I'm, I'm glad we're, I'm excited to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, we're, we're going to talk about it here in a sec. But uh, I'll cap this off by saying uh, Samuel Jackson and a lot of other celebrities are. Yeah, uh, I wanted to get to his it. comments. Yeah. But I'll let you um, this. Uh, so he just had comments that basically were saying like, look, um, there are a lot of people who uh, who don't like his films, you know, Scorsese's films, you know, um, that everybody likes kind of what they like, you know, and, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing what he, he said. Um, uh, but that there, there are a lot of, uh, I believe it's like, I think he said Irish Americans or Italian Americans, uh, Italian Americans or wh- whoever who don't like the way that he always depicts Italians as these like mobsters and gangsters and, and thinks, uh, think that it's detrimental to their community. Um, so there are people who don't really respect his art, you know? Yeah. And it's like, how would you, and, and it, and I guess it's easy for him to brush the people off cause he's like, but they're still selling, you know? Yeah. But that's what the fuck the people who are creating comic movies are saying too. Motherfucker, we're selling. <laughs> like, yeah. what the fuck are you talking about? Like, not cinema, bitch. What's playing in the cinema right now? Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, when when was the last movie you did that grossed a billion dollars? Exactly. Right? Yeah. So as long as people are buying this shit, it is what it is. Right? Yeah. It, it is what you say it is. If people are buying it and people are doing it willingly, if you make a film about a comic book character and people go to the if theaters you, if you to make see a film, that if film, if it's you put, a film. If you record something on a video. Uh, you, I don't even. We're beyond even the age of where you have to have it in theaters. That goes back to the whole Spielberg thing. Go, it goes beyond that. If you produce something, if you shoot it, if you have sound, if you have characters, if you have dialogue, I don't give a shit if it's the piece. Of, like it could be Spider Man three, three for all I fucking care. We all know it's well documented how much I hate that fucking yeah. movie. It's still a it's fucking still a cinematic film. film. Yeah. So uh, Scorsese, love you, dude. Love your fucking films, yeah. but you can piss off with the that. Fuck out of here. Yeah. Fuck <laughs> out of yeah. here. Yeah. But, As the Italians in your movies would say, yeah, uh, that, I'm I'm pretty sure that's racist, but uh, we'll, we'll move on. From hey, yeah, I didn't do it. Of course, <laughs> did it. 